Crispy. It looks like a, a Tom Petty recording studio here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. The link there is that Tom Petty has got a brilliant song called uh, Honey Bee, and Bees and Hums really is where Kevin and I are tonight. Um, I've always been fascinated by bees. They're not only their, their own being, as it were, their own ecology, but the way they've been represented, very old representations of bees throughout um, human history, everything from the perfect commonwealth to slavery and indolence and everything in between. Um, my side of the contribution to the hum, to the, uh, to the frequency tonight, are three little micro bee narratives um, from what you might call a, a honey map or a, a bee cartography or an apiarist's chart or some such expensive phrase. And I'm, I'm just going to irritate and interrupt him some annoying noises. Um, based on the idea that in um, the 1990s and for a number of years before that, um, people all around the world had reported hearing a low frequency hum um, that is impossible to block out and it caused people insomnia uh, and uh, nervous breakdowns and in one, at least one case, suicide. Uh, hum. And uh, there's just an epigraph to that from uh, Matt Truman writing in The Guardian in February 2015. He says, to hum is to be human. Spanish Netherlands, 1653. I, Adrienne de Vint, unburier of bees. These hands with nothing but a dirty trowel and a plumb line out of true disturbed King Childeric in the grave. I felt only that my chisel's chime had altered, that the air had finally changed. Through a chink, no bigger than a plum, I saw the rough draft of a body, bracelets, rings, 300 things like golden pegs, unmoving, but with eyes and wings. New Mexico, Ontario, Hythe and Sausalito, mm -hmm. Bristol, Southampton, Wellington, Kokomo, the humming is coming. Heard only by the hummers, amygdala attuned may be to some mute music. Do they hear the big bang slow to echoes darkening in the oracle? Or pipe pressured gas tripping a siren switch in stones and roots that sound the ground? France, 1895, Madame, mistress of bees, take me through the gate to where slim Holland blouses move among the hives, and I can only guess the girl behind the blue gauze veil. Lead me to the one who mists the brood frames with fresh lavender, or the one who lets the comb frames fill with sun, or the one who came here pale from Paris, who now has honey running to her cuffs. Or satellites cold calling mobile masts, intoning mass e-coms, or pumping stations booming air through deep slung tunnels, or infrasonic megafans waving off malignant fumes or whining wind farms juddering on stalks while birds break shriek beaked on spinning sails or locomotive motorway mill squealing thumping at busted ears whose venous murmurs loop through tubes in blood-borne breves and nerve-struck minims Wales dystopian this year in the absence of bees, we raid ourselves for sweetness. Deflowered, our dreams are troubled by scents. Orange blossom, hymen, time. News comes through pricked antennae. One last hive still humming. Three trees somewhere running gluey gold. One came to us out of the metallic afternoon, holding a dead stem. I will show you death, he said, at the green heart of this 
flower. Oh, the sea shelling out from San Francisco, humming with midshipmen, fish mouthing, mate music off Alameda's coast. Or submarine frequencies crooning way below the whale rung oceans. The same song preyed upon the shell shocked man whose ceaseless, sourceless clamor caused to hurl himself at some kind of silence. These days, they say. Micro seismic waves make Earth oscillate, the whole planet drone along. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs>